Hi everyone, in this HBridge tutorial we will be going through all the steps you need to implement HBridges in your motor related projects. That is, if you need a motor that can spin in both directions. The first thing we'll do is go through some of the essential theory and understanding the concept behind HBridges and why they work. The next thing we'll look at is to implement the theory we learnt in the previous section to make a simple HBridge using only buttons. And then finally, in the last section, we'll be making a working HBridge that uses transistors as switches instead of buttons. I hope you're excited to learn about HBridges, but before before we dive in, please remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, click the bell icon and check out my other social media to see more projects that I'm currently working on. Alright, for the first section of the video, we're going to look at some of the essential theory behind H bridges. Now, imagine you have a motor, and when you connect power to the motor, it starts spinning in a certain direction. But what if you want the motor to have the ability to spin both ways? Well, you can actually achieve this by literally just reversing the plus and minus of the battery, or the motor of course. And as you can see, it spins the other way. When the positive side of the battery is connected to the positive terminal of the motor, the motor will spin clockwise. And if the polarity is reversed, the motor will spin anti-clockwise. Now, obviously, you don't want to reverse the polarity manually every single time you want the motor to spin the other direction. This is where the H-bridge comes in. The following are some examples I could come up with for where you'd use H-bridges in the first place. Let's say you have a robot that works on wheels and you want the robot to be able to not only move forward, but also reverse. You would use an H-bridge for this. Let's say you have an electric gate that can open and close by the push of a button. The motor that opens and closes the gate has to have some kind of H bridge implementation to be able to make the motor rotate in both ways. These were just some examples, so let's look at what an H bridge is. An H bridge is a special type of circuit that allows a motor to rotate in both directions. Here's a simple schematic of an H bridge. This thing at the top is the positive terminal of the battery, this thing at the bottom is the negative terminal or ground, the M in the middle is the motor, and all these things on the sides are switches, and all of them have their own labels. So S1, S2, S3, and S4. These switches can be any type of switch, by the way. So they can be buttons, transistors, or any type of switch. You can probably see why the circuit is called an H-bridge. It has the shape of an H. Now, remember when I said that if the positive terminal of the power supply goes through the positive terminal of the motor, the motor will spin clockwise. Well, let's imagine I close the switch for S1. Nothing will happen yet because the circuit is still open. But what if I close S3 as well? Now what happens, as you can see, is that current will flow out of the positive of the battery and will go through the positive of the motor and out by the negative of the motor. And then the current will follow the rest of the path to the negative of the battery. This will result in the motor spinning clockwise. What would happen if we press the other two switches though? Now what happens is that current flows out from the positive of the battery into the negative of the motor and then it follows the rest of the path to the negative of the battery. This will cause the motor to spin anti-clockwise. As you may have realized, these two switches work together and these two switches work together. By pressing these two, the motor will spin clockwise and by pressing the other two, the motor will spin anti-clockwise. This happens because we're essentially reversing the polarity. The positive of the battery in this case goes through the positive of the motor, while in the other case the positive of the battery goes through the negative of the motor. Now typically you wouldn't want to use buttons for all the switches because that would mean you'd have to press two buttons at the same time to get the motor spinning in a certain direction. You'd most likely want to use four transistors as the switches and probably two buttons where each button controls two of the transistors, meaning that you'd have one button for clockwise and another button for anti-clockwise. We will be making an H-bridge that uses transistors in this tutorial, but for the sake of understanding H-bridges, the first circuit we'll be making uses only four buttons. Alright, so I have the breadboard that we'll be using right here. Now, like I said, the first H-bridge we'll be making uses four buttons. So I have two male-to-male -male wires here. This one's going to be used for the positive of the power supply, the positive of the battery. This one's going to be used for the negative of the battery, and it goes in the negative terminal. This one goes in the positive term. Now, you always want to connect the power supply last, so I'm just going to leave this for now. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to take the motor. I'm going to take this wheel as well. I'm just going to put it on the motor. These are the two terminals which the wiring has to go through. I believe this one's the positive of the motor, but I could be wrong. We'll, uh, we'll see now. I'll take two alligator clips. I'll put one here, and I'll connect the other one to the other side here. I'll put this there, that there, and we'll keep it like this. I have two male-to-male -male wires again. I'm going to connect this one to here, and then I'm going to put this in a random slot or row here. I'm going to do the same for this one, put it there, and then there. 
If we think back to our H-bridge schematic or circuit diagram, we need four switches, right? Two of the switches are gonna to work together to make the motor spin in a certain direction. Two, the other two switches are gonna make it spin in the other direction. So I have four buttons here. You can probably guess that the two yellow ones are gonna to work together, two blue ones are gonna to work together. So what I'll do is I'll put one blue one here and one yellow one here. And I'll put the other blue one here and the other yellow one here. Okay, I have some more male to male wires right here. We need to connect to the positive of the battery, of the power supply, and connect it to a certain switch. We actually need to connect both switches, but I'm not gonna do yellow yet, I'll just do blue first so you get the idea. Now that this is connected, blue is connected to the positive, we need to take blue and we need to make it so that blue, actually, this is the other side, if we press this, it's going to allow current to flow here. We need to take this and put it in... We, may, we have to make it go through the motor. Right now it's going to go like this, boom, we press, boom, here it goes through here. Now it's back here, right? Now we need to make this go through the other button, the other switch. We're going to do it like this. Then we have to take this to negative. So we'll do this and then we'll put it in the negative rail. Okay, so I have four more male-to-male -male wires right here. Now we need to do the yellow switches. Both of the first switches connect to the positive of the power supply, so that's what we did right That's what we did right there. We have to make this go through the other terminal of the motor, right? So this one goes through this here, goes through the yellow, this terminal here. We have to make this one go through here, go through this side of the motor. So let me just connect it real quick. There we go. And then we connect it here. There we go. Right, so now current is going here. If we press this button, we allow current to go through here. Now it ends up here, right? Here at the other side of the motor. So let's connect a wire there. Now we have to connect this to the other switch, which works with this yellow one, which is of course the other yellow one. I'll take this other wire we have, put it in there, and then connect that to the negative terminal, the negative of the power supply. Now this should work, so we can finally connect our battery. I'll take a black alligator clip for the negative of the battery. I'll connect that here to this wire right there. We can connect the positive, which I'll do like so. So if we press the two blue ones, I'll actually, I'll hold the motor in my hand so you can see better. If we press the two blue buttons, it goes clockwise, which means it's going through here. So this is in fact the positive terminal of the motor. So I was correct. Okay, cool. So blue makes it go clockwise. And as you can obviously guess, yellow makes it go anti-clockwise. Okay, pretty cool stuff. All right, so let's make our H-bridge using transistors as the switches. All right, so what I have here is exactly um, as we've had previously. Um, we just have a motor here with the uh, positive side uh, connected to an alligator clip with a male-to-male -male wire and the negative side connected, same, same story there, uh, here. So I'll just connect the motor to some random place here in some random slot on the breadboard. There we go, motor is connected. I'll do the same thing with the battery's wires. Um, so this is gonna be negative and we'll put negative at the bottom here in the negative rail and uh, we'll, we'll connect the battery at the end. Then this is gonna be positive, so I'll put that in the positive rail at the top, the positive pin. All right, so now make sure these aren't touching, that, that could be dangerous. There we go. We'll connect the battery here at the end, of course. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the two buttons. This one is gonna do, let's say this one's gonna do clockwise. This is gonna do anti-clockwise. If we'd want to make this button rotate the motor clockwise, we'd wanna make it activate a transistor that goes through this wire first. This is the positive of the motor, which means it's gonna spin clockwise if the positive were to go through this positive of the motor first. So I'm just gonna put this button down here. All right, so I'm gonna be using four transistors. Um, I'm not sure if the camera can see. This is a this is an NPN transistor, um, where this is the where this is the emitter, this is the base, and this is the collector. 
So I'm just gonna put the other transistors down. We'll only be working with two for now. This button over here has to activate both of these transistors. So I'm gonna put a transistor down here somewhere. This transistor is facing that way, which means that, let me actually just pick this up. Um, I'll zoom in, but on the far right is the emitter in the middle is the base, on the far left is the collector. So we'll do it like that. And I'm actually going to put the other one down on the other side as well, facing this direction, which means it's uh, emitter, base, collector. Okay, so now this button is going to activate both of these transistors. I'm going to be using my own handmade wires for this so that it's easier to see. I'm going to connect this button to positive, if I can just get it there. Cool, this button is now connected to the positive lead of the battery. Seeing as our button is now connected to positive, we need to make it so that current goes through the base leads, the base pins of both of these transistors. So for each transistor, I'm gonna use a resistor of a thousand ohms. These ones I believe have 1% tolerance. So we'll connect the base pin of this transistor to the button because this button has to activate both of these. Then I'm going to take the other resistor, put it in the base of this transistor, and connect that to the button over here. So now that we have our switches connected, we can actually connect this. We can actually connect this transistor, the top one, the top switch, to positive. We need to make it so that the collector is connected to positive. So. I'm going to put that in the I'm going to put this in the collector of the transistor. Now we're going to take another wire. We're going to connect that to the to the emitter and we're going to put it through this side. So if you think about it, if we press this button, if we press this button, current is going to flow through the base of this transistor, allowing current to flow here. We activate the switch basically. And so we're allowing positive to go through the positive of the motor, which means this motor is going to spin clockwise if you press the blue button. Now we're all the way here, boom, boom. We're here at the other side of the motor, and we have to connect this wire to the collector of this transistor, which is the one on the far right. And then, of course, we need to connect this transistor to the negative terminal or the negative of the battery. Okay, now this side should be done. So we can now finally do the other side. So I'm going to put this yellow button here. We're going to do the exact same thing we did here, except um, positive is going to go through this side of the motor, which is going to make it spin anti-clockwise, out here through the other transistor, and then to negative. I'm going to take the other two transistors we have. I'm going to do it the same way as this. So I'm going to make one facing, I'm going to put the one that's on top, I'm going to make it face upwards gonna put one at the bottom gonna make this one face downwards let me actually just move this one up a bit there we go the base pins of these transistors should still receive positive so I'm gonna connect the button to positive same story with the resistors these are these are still a thousand ohms so I'm connecting these resistors to the base pins of the transistors same as we did with the other ones and now we're doing the same as before except we're gonna make it so that the positive, the positive of the battery goes through this one's collector. The collector's on this side, the right side. All right. Then we're gonna connect to this one's emitter to this side of the motor. There we go. So now if we press this button, we're gonna turn on this transistor. Current is gonna go through here, through here, and then that means positive of the battery is gonna go through the negative of the motor, which is gonna make it spin anti-clockwise. But now, of course, we need to finish this transistor first before any of that happens. So I'm gonna take another wire. I'm gonna put this one into this part of the motor. Then we wanna connect this to the collector of the transistor, which is this pin right here, the left side. And now all that's left to do is to connect the emitter to the negative of the battery. So we'll put this there, which is connected to the emitter of that transistor. And we want to put that in the negative terminal, the negative of the battery. Now, if we were to connect a battery 
or a power supply. Here, okay, I uh, almost thought I lost it. This is the positive of the battery, of course. So we want to do this. Okay, now let's just test first because I might have done something wrong, honestly. There we go. This, okay, moment, moment of truth. Okay, that is in fact clockwise. We said this one was going to be clockwise. And that one is in fact anti-clockwise. 